Hi, when the truth is an object, what's the pros and the cons of this next check? Oh, hi, it's Ningani. I'm back with videos, so that's cool. You see the trailer video? I jumped out of a plane, so that was fun. Anyway, because of the lack of budget and patience, I can't do something that cool every video unless I become rich. So make sure you watch the ads on this video so I get paid. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're using the ad blocker? Well, me too, but kind of rude, dude. Anyway, in terms of channel direction for what I want to create from here on out, I want to create a variety of content about anything I may have interest in. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out as I go. But to get things started up again, I figured I'd talk about this indie game that I came across on Twitter, actually. I'm a big indie game advocate, and I love anything where creative independents pursue their passion. Demon Turf is exactly that. Super cool, super fun, super stylish, and full of personality. Look at this gameplay. Right off the bat, I'm sure you notice that there's a blend of 2D artwork with a 3D overworld and environment. Kind of like Paper Mario and Bug Fables, right? No, you idiot. You see, Paper Mario and Bug Fables are amazing games that have a really cool blend of 3D and 2D, but those games are turn-based RPGs. They have an explorable overworld, but the story and the combat carry those games. With Demon Turf, it is a 3D action platformer, similar to Mario 64, A Hat in Time, and other games like that. It's all about the movement and the exploration that make these games fun. Now, for a 2D character to move well within a 3D environment on an indie game budget, that sounds kind of, eh, kind of sus. You wouldn't expect a 3D platformer to have a 2D character. It's always been 2D majorly stays with 2D, and 3D stays majorly within 3D. Not to say that there's exceptions. I even from the beginning of 3D video games, if you look at Mario 64, the trees, those are 2D. This is different. Biggest question is, what does the game feel like to play? Would you believe me if I said that it's really good? Like, easily past Mario 64 good, easily on par with Hat in Time good, and not even that far from Super Mario Odyssey good. Because it is. The easiest way to make or break a game is on how it feels to play. Especially Especially in a game like this, it's critical. If the character is too tedious to move, it would kill the entire experience. But this game is, is just fun to play. The combat, the movement, it all flows so well and it doesn't even feel weird that it's a 2D character or 2D enemies. And actually, the art style, the aesthetic, it's all really stylish and cool. The way they did it, super good. Like, this is good. And that's where I want to talk about the main character, Beebs, who makes this game so personality filled as well. I, look, I get the concept of not giving the playable character a personality to make the player feel like they're the main character, but dude, Dude, I don't know, that's just boring. That I, that just feels boring to me. Personality is expression and it makes something interesting. Even if you don't like the character, it at least makes it interesting. I mean, Last of Us 2 spoiler, but the way that they set up Abby as you finding out that she killed Joel and then having you play as her, that was at least interesting. And that's probably the most intense way to introduce a character and actually probably a bad example because that game is bad. But in my opinion, Abby is still more of an interesting character than Link. <gasps> I mean, at this point, the big 3D platformer mask Scots are boring, they're predictable, they're their own thing. I don't expect Mario to have some huge plot development and become a thugger plumber or anything. But come on, that'd at least be interesting. I like seeing personality within characters, and that's a big reason why I like Demon Turf. Beebs is easily a flawed and overly cocky character who comes off as edgy and sassy, but come on, that's cool. Mario and Sonic are the same as they've ever been, and they're even too big to change at this point. I mean, dude, look at Sonic Forces. Sonic was captured for months, tortured, after being captured by Eggman. That's gotta change him, right? That's gotta change Sonic as a person. This is the end, Sonic. Oh, hey, sounds like the party started. Want to let me go and join in? No? Of course not. You hate fun. Yeah, no. I guess what makes a character interesting and evolve as a character is a good story as well. And Demon Turf doesn't seem to be super story heavy, although I would easily get invested into the lore if they did take that route. But the best example of a character changing through their experiences would be this guy. Aaron goddamn Jaeger is a perfect example of a character who has truly changed through his experiences. If you haven't watched Attack on Titan, please get hit. It's literally one of the best animes out right now, and if you disagree, you're wrong. I don't want to get into really spoiler territory, but dude, season four of Attack on Titan, aka this final season, Aaron as a character has changed. He's went from the young, ambitious, energetic knucklehead to a dude who just wants to rest, man. I mean, I guess stagnant characters have their own upsides. They become an icon in a way, like Sonic and Mario. Everybody knows them, everybody knows they're nice and cool, and everybody likes them. But they lose their edge and potential for evolution. They become less of a character that feels human. I like characters that have personality and feel real. Even characters that I hate, like this bastard. For the uncultured, this is Kokichi from Danganronpa V3. This guy is like the most evil character known to man. But he's also childish and goofy and funny. And I like that there's traits that I like within him. Is he a morally good character? Hell no. But he's interesting and exciting. Look, characters and humans are flawed and not perfect, so the 
these perfect like characters never connect with me like the flawed characters and people. Okay, okay, hear me out. Kanye West. What? He's a perfect example of this. He's probably one of the most controversial people in media, but I like Kanye so much because of his creativity, confidence, and realness. Do I agree on everything with him? No, definitely not. But that's just what it means to be human. I have no idea how this video went from any games to Kanye West, but here we are. Look, I think me as a creator wants to focus more on the style of the creation over the perfection of it. I can endlessly work on videos or focus too much on this script, but at some point I just gotta create. There is no perfection in subjective art, and I I want to make something cool that gives me personal fulfillment and gets views. I don't even know what the title of this video. I'll figure it out. Anyway, let me backtrack a little bit. The reason I like Demon Turf so much is because it doesn't hold itself back. It's not afraid to be itself. It's not afraid to be creative, experimental, and full of personality. Look, I'd love to make an indie game one day, and I feel like I'm a pretty creative guy. This is one of those indie games that really inspire me. If there's any millionaire investors watching this video, <laughs> hit me up. Okay, that's all of the script I had planned. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want me to talk about. If you liked it, disliked it, let me get your opinions. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Can you beat? 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 Will you beat? Can you beat? Can you beat? You beat? Can you beat? Can you beat? Can you beat? Can you beat? Will you beat? Can you beat? Can you beat?